your life matters. Your life matters. If I've ever seen a generation now that is just self-destruction, is flowing ever, it's because they don't realize that their life matters. They're being told there's no purpose, there's no God, there's nothing. Just live and die. What a hopeless confession to be spoken over a generation. But listen, your life matters. It makes a difference. Man, your life makes a difference. It's the reason Father's Day is celebrated in the first place. You influence society and family more than you ever will know or I will know. It's why we are told to make every effort to live right and to be blameless. Because how we live, God knows, will teach others how to live. Do you think your life can teach anybody anything? Probably not in our own heads. Do you think Noah thought his life could teach anything? Probably not. He probably felt like a complete and utter crazy man and loner in the generation in which he lived and died. But we're told that Noah, he taught us persistence, didn't he? In spite of all the atheism and the, the difficulties, and mockings, Noah continued to walk on to the covering of God the Father. Noah endured scoffing and mockings, and I'm sure at times even doubt, but he never gave up. Church, your persistence teaches others not to give up for one example. What about Jonah? Jonah taught us obedience and many other things, but he also taught us that God's way is much easier, that God knows better. He taught us that running from God is not worth the hassle. We can do it the easy way and be blessed. What about Job? Well, he taught us patience. Job was a righteous man, yet he suffered greatly. His friends accused him, turned against him, sat beside him and questioned the hidden sin in his life. In fact, they had more hidden sin in their lives than he did. His wife, bless her, probably thought she was doing him a good turn, encouraged him to curse God and die. He mourned like no other man mourned. And some of us know how to mourn. And some of us are mourning. But yet he waited on God and he proved God for himself, regardless of what was going on. Job waited, and he trusted, and he waited, and God showed up and healed his suffering, and he restored that which the locust had eaten in his life. Now, God promises this to all his people. And maybe you're here this morning, and sin has absolutely wrecked your life, wrecked your family, wrecked your marriage, wrecked your home, wrecked everything. I don't know. I know the sin wrecks. But God says, I will restore that which sin has taken from you. And here's the thing about patience. The things that are worth waiting for require much patience. Job's living taught us patience. Now lastly, Moses taught us boldness. Moses was afraid of the calling of God that he placed in his life. Many a men are run from the calling of being men. How many men have run from relationships when they found out there was a pregnancy? How many men have left fatherless children because they just felt it easier? Perhaps deep, deep within them, they were so afraid of what was happening that the easiest thing for them to do was run. I'm telling you, thousands and thousands of men have done that today. Not perhaps out of anything other than fear within them, but they'll never admit it. And here we see a man, Moses, was so afraid of his own weaknesses and inabilities that they completely consumed him and all he could see was how inaccurate or how weak that he was within himself. And God said to him, listen, Moses, I've called you and I'm sending you to set my people free. But the next verse says this, but listen, it says, I'm going with you. Man, be bold. Don't let on you know everything, but be bold and live for God. Moses taught us that boldness is the way to be, to trust God. And he proved God in his own life. So church, your life makes a difference. It influences your communities in ways that you can't even see. It teaches your children in your life to love God. It teaches them persistence, even when things go against them. It teaches them obedience. It teaches them patience and boldness, to refuse to allow fear in their life to hold them back. Amen? You see the, the importance of men to teach your kids not to turn back even when we're rejected, to keep going. It's a coincidence that everyone is too busy today. Sure it's not. 
And the Father says, Be still, and know that I am God. Be still and walk in the covering that I have given you. Be still in the presence of God, and we will find ourselves being persistent. We'll find ourselves walking in obedience, not through works, but through the overflow. We'll find ourselves with godly patience and boldness.